Welcome to Success Stories. In this particular series, we're going to look at the success stories of manufacturing companies in Barbados. And today's story features one that we know them by their sound. You know them by their taste, but you're really going to get to know them in terms of their innovation, their marketing strategies, and yes, how they've been able to use all kinds of technology and renewable energy to sustain them over these past 120 years. So with me today is CEO of Bico Limited, Glenn Stewart. Glenn, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Nice to be here. And thank I you am for that so excited to have you here. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Bico really is the success story, not only in Barbados, but beyond our shores, because I feel like other Caribbean islands have grown up knowing the Bico products. That is correct. The brand is well known throughout the region, and um, we continue to spread our wings and to bring happiness to all the households across um, CARICOM and the other islands. Bringing happiness is correct. I mean, if, that, yes. if that's a job, sure, sign me up. We just yes. bring happiness from Indeed. house to house. But of course, it takes more than just a smiley face it to does. keep an operation like that. I mean, if you look at the uh, beginning stages to where we are now in 2021, there, have, there has been so much growth that has happened with the company. Indeed, um, for 120 years, you know, the company has really withstood the test of time and has grown from strength to strength, um, navigating all the challenges thrown at us, most recently, of course, being COVID and, mm -hmm. um, and all the other supply chain challenges and so on that we would have had. So yes, we continue. I mean, we, our, our strength comes from the happiness that we see on the faces of our customers and consumers, um, all the way from the children right up to, you know, to the older folks like me. <laughs> He blushes. But let's start with some of the re-innovation that you have had to um, go through over the time. There was the mm. huge fire. Right, in, two, in 2009, that's yes. correct. And, yes. But it also gave rise to an opportunity to do things a little differently yes. going forward. So let's yes. talk about that. So Right, so after the fire, uh, what we did, uh, in terms of continuing to, to, to please our customers, we would have been important. We had a co-pack arrangements where we imported our ice creams from Trinidad and Suriname and so on. And um, in 2020, the opportunity arose uh, with the chairman's leadership to rebuild the factory. Um, we rebuilt the factory and we, we now uh, restarted our um, export strategy again. Um, but in addition to rebuilding the factory, we, it also forced us to re re revisit the business, relook at the business um, from the perspective of how, how we um, navigate the space both locally and regionally um, and so we've done a lot of innovation in terms of our mobile fleet and taking the product to the consumer rather than you know just being in the supermarket channels and so on so our big strength is really being able to not just deliver um, the happiness to the consumer but to interact mm -hmm. um, with the consumer and to, to hear from them uh, what they expect uh, of a brand like ours that brings pleasure um, we 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 have also continued to grow in terms of the portfolio of products that we, we carry. We are not we're known very well for our ice creams and the chime on our mobiles, um, but we also are into compostables. We, are, we have a huge element of the business focused on a sustainable business model. Mm -hmm. So a part of our fleet, our electric vehicles, we, we are part of our the power consumed to produce our products comes from solar energy. And so we, we are also heavily invested in ensuring that while we bring happiness, that we do it in a manner that is sustainable. Because looking forward now, there are certain targets that one would want to meet in terms of how to use renewable energy, how to cut down on the cost of traditional sources of energy, right. and just be a green company, a socially responsible company. Yes, exactly. And, and that's what we try to bring in, in, our, in our tubs, our ice cream tubs and cups, um, a product that is produced um, with respecting um, the, the sustainability of our environment and uh, leaving a, a great um, earth for the very, our very consumers, which would largely be a lot of children as well. Mm -hmm. um, we are very vested in ensuring that as we produce, we, 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 we pay attention to the targets associated with um, how we consume the natural resources. And it's one of the, the reasons why we are also very fixated on since COVID especially, fixated on looking at our sourcing strategy um, for raw materials. Mm -hmm. And we've started to look and we, we're getting some closer to home. So we're in the region, in Trinidad and in Guyana and so on. We were able to 
acquire raw materials for our production facility from regional sources. And COVID would have um, helped us to navigate uh, these areas as part of our strategy when we had the, the, the situations with high increased cost of freight mm -hmm. and uh, inability to supply from out of North America and other regions. It is our CARICOM sisters and brothers who would have um, come to the aid in terms of being able to source um, raw materials as well. So it's part of what kept us going. Um, by, you know, sticking close to the very uh, consumer base that we have in the region. Mm -hmm. Now, I kept thinking that, especially during times like COVID, when our mobility, especially in the early stages, was drastically cut. So you had mm -hmm. supermarkets only on certain days, yes. et cetera, et cetera. And the mobilers, you all became little mini heroes throughout people's yes. neighborhoods because yes. we're home more often, the children are home more often, yes. you ate more. Um, and if you felt like you wanted some sort of treat something that felt good and the mobilers were there to bring the product to your door. But now that we have a little bit more movement, how do you see the company re-engineering the mobiler strategy? Right, so with our mobiler strategy, um, the, the whole, the end game there is really to keep, for, our, our, for the brand to be close to our consumer. Mm -hmm. And one way we're going to do that, I mean, we're still navigating the pandemic. So we're well aware that even though people have a little more freedom, um, we're also well aware that they still have to be cautious. And in terms of helping to make that happen, we're going to introduce a significant amount of technology um, over the next couple of weeks um, in terms of how the consumer can interact with the product and interact with the mobilers and the brand. We are going to give the consumer the ability to access the brand from their smartphones and their computers and so on. Yes, Ooh. so we're, we're gonna incorporate some very, very nice technology um, over the next couple of weeks uh, for the consumers to, to really spend, become closer, way closer to the brand. This is starting to feel like Uber for ice cream. So it's like, what, can I kind of like call yes, somebody pretty up kind much, of thing? Pretty much, yeah, pretty much, you're, 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 you've hit the nail on the head. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> where we're going, yes. Okay. Yes. So this is a good use of traditional meets digital meets, digital, meets yes. convenience. Exactly. I'm here for it. Yes. Yeah, we, my, we. my phone got space for an app. I'm good for it. <laughs> yes, we know. That's fantastic stuff. Yes. And and it's yeah, it's it's what as a brand, it's it's part of our evolution and the growth. Um, we we know that um, that is what people have largely been dependent upon in times of uh, quarantining and so on. Their their phones, they, mm -hmm. they're pretty much um, the dependency is on their phones and being able to communicate using their, their digital instruments. And so uh, we're going to make sure that they're able to continue to enjoy their favorite treat, right? Um, even though they have to do it off of their instruments, yeah. Now, as a consumer, we're fairly very um, focused on the end product, which is the yes. treat. But as a company, you have to think about how all of the operation runs, how all the departments. Yes. How has the recent pandemic and, and what it has dealt, uh, manufacturing in particular, how have you been able to use that opportunity to re-engineer, um, to innovate using right. digital spaces, technology, that sort of thing? Right. So, so in, for all aspects of the business, um, whether it be how we interact with our suppliers who provide us raw materials, whether it be how we interact with our markets uh, and, and, and our personnel in the markets, um, we've, uh, we've used, technology has been the saving grace, even for our own team. Mm -hmm. um, we've had to do the quasi approach in terms of the team being on the ground. Our mobilers, as you know, are always out there um, yeah. serving our customers and making sure that we, um, we positively impact the psychology of the nation. <laughs> um, so we, technology has helped us because we were able to then use all of the uh, video, video tools and so on to, to, to keep in touch and to make sure that we service um, our customers and vendors and all the stakeholders we work with timely. Um, even though we have, we, we, we're constrained in terms of being able to do it the way we traditionally are accustomed to by visiting the markets, we were still able to get, for example, our markets, um, supply our markets timely mm -hmm. um, by just keeping in touch with them on, on the digital platforms and, and, and the video, pla video platforms. So we still manage to, you know, to be able to, to, to do and to get through business. We've reoriented everything we did um, towards the digital realm, mm -hmm. and, and that, is, that has kept us going. Um, and some of our customers are even happier in a way because 
um, they're able to, you know, be more instantaneous. You know, you're not traveling as much, but you still can, they can still get you when they want you. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I was thinking recently, of course, I mean, there was that huge debacle with a ship that mm -hmm. by just the sheer force of Mother Nature and yes. being blown and blocking a whole canal, yes. the supply chain came to a grinding halt right. for much of the globe. Yes. Did it give rise to greater thought about how to strategically use what is available, available within our tentacles reach yes especially in this part of the world where we're so vulnerable to those things yes and 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 that is so true and it it, it actually we, we were ahead of the curve to some degree because we already had great relationships with um some raw material suppliers right here in barbados actually mm -hmm. good um and then of course for where we had other gaps we we were able to get um, raw materials from around the region caricom um, so it really reinforced the point of, of, of us looking at risk in that regard and uh, paying attention to, and even in some cases, being the catalyst for development of, of new businesses within the region that can supply raw materials to manufacturing, um, both in Barbados and, and around the region as well. Um, so yes, it, we, we were already ahead of the curve because we worked very closely with some um, businesses here, I can give shout out, for example, to Wabisco, mm -hmm. um, you know, or Cookie and Cream. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, so we, we do have some of those very strong relationships right. um, that we, we were quite, you know, it, it, pro it, pr it quite proved why those relationships were important to begin with before COVID. You know, it showed up that, look, this is why it was valuable to have those relationships. And so we continue to build upon those and to look very close to home as our op first option when we resourcing or sourcing strategies being created and developed and honed. Now, in our previous conversation, you gave so much homage to the chairman yes. and the chairman's vision right. and, you know, basically orchestrating where we see you all today. Yes. What were some of those elements that basically left you in awe and still left you with a sense of gratitude that this was how the chairman yes. saw things. Right. So we're 120 years yes. old as a company. And uh, to have a chairman who've been around for 30 of those years, yeah. in and of itself, um, speaks to resilience. Um, whether it be from the navigation of the fire. I mean, I, I pretty much uh, went through, you know, navigated one or two storms mm -hmm. um, with the company. You could imagine over the 30 years that he's been at the helm of Seen the company. Seen it all. Right. Seen it all. Um, you know, and the recent ones um, also is what left me in awe with, with when we navigated the pandemic, the volcanic ash. Um, the, 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 well, I mentioned the storms already and then mm -hmm. COVID as well, you know. Um, we still we came out uh, thriving from most of those events um, because of, the systems that he would have put in place over the years, um, the things that we would have seen in terms of our diversification strategy, our attention to sustainable initiatives, um, our attention to how we manage uh, our stakeholders, mm -hmm. um, all of those things are what kept us going. Um, and we, we and, and the chairman is 85 years old, so you would know that we, we get all the stories of you know you know how he came through some of the challenges he would have faced over the years. Right. And um, we learn from them, we tweak them, we, we, they, they help us to, to, to see another side of, of, of another context of, of the situations that mm -hmm. we face as a company. And um, those are the things that largely um, take us, keep us going, you know, and, and take us forward. Um, we, 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 we go to him from time to time when we're faced with, with certain challenges, you know, and just to get some of those stories. Right. We want to hear them, you know, we want to learn from them. And then we would sit with him and say, well, what do you think of our, you know, our strategy going forward and so on. And, um, and we, we enjoy those, those back and forth uh, with him. But yeah, he's, he is a treasure to, to, to the company. Um, as I say, you know, 30 years is, is a quite a long time for yeah. a company like ours. And um, we look forward, and he, he says to us, you know, yes, he, he's looking forward to, to the next 30 oh, years. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Must have a vision. Now, if we can just um, put on your engineering hat for just a moment, right. what would you personally like to see more of coming out of the local manufacturing sector? Uh, the, a, a greater adaptation to technology. 
Um, we're a small island. Mm -hmm. Our competitive advantage is uh, quality. We're not uh, in the game, or I should say in the business of uh, highly being volume driven. Barbados as a product is known as a quality or a premium product. Right. Um, so our manufacturing sector should be so aligned. To do that, we, we, we need to probably be more uh, technology centric or be more associated with um, things like automation and technological systems as we try to produce products that are consistent and of premium, of a premium quality and offering. And um, that, that reliance on technology, um, to my mind, is going to really allow our, our products to be, to be able to stand up and to, to be competitive in the global space. Um, so yes, my, my, my vision and my belief is that once we uh, add more from an automation and a technological standpoint to our manufacturing, um, industries, it's going to really help us to remain competitive and resilient for the future. And finally, when you think of Bico, what would you want consumers, the average Barbadian, any one of our regional partners to be thinking when they hear the word Bico? So I know ice cream comes to the top of mind, but uh, I w would love our consumers to see us as a multi-dimensional company um, in the sense that we are able to to meet the needs of the company of the island um, from a, a, a different standpoint. So we have the frozen foods division because we also work very closely with the hotel sector, mm -hmm. uh, with the frozen foods, uh, which is the, the frozen the croissants and the, the um, and the other um, the baguettes and so on, the other mm -hmm. breads. So we work very closely with the tourism sector in that regard. We also have, in addition to our ice cream, we have Harbor Cold Store. Um, where we have a million cubic feet of cold storage space. We're a million, a cubic, million cubic feet. feet of cold storage space. So we, we pretty much take care of all your perishables in times of need when the island has a power challenges and so on. That's where most of, of, of the island comes to, to bring uh, for us to keep their stuff cold for them. Right. Um, so we are multidimensional in that regard as a company and as a brand. Um, and then we also have the compostable lines. We are known for vegware. Um, that's our strong compostable brand, branded line. Um, since the plastic ban in Barbados, um, we have really come to the aid of the consumers to ensure that um, every household, every business um, use utensils and use um, disposable containers um, that respect and, and follow the law, the, new, the plastic act, plastic ban um, that is imposed. So yeah, so we would want con consumers to see us as a multi-dimensional company. Yes, we bring you uh, pleasure in the form of our ice creams, but we are also multidimensional in that we are able to, to take care of more than. Well, we love the smiles that you bring us each and every time via the mobile and looking forward to the app and any other innovation that you all have coming forth. So well done on 120 and here's looking to the next 120. Thank you very, very much. And, and we, 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 we're working hard to make sure that the next 120 become even more pleasurable. Absolutely. And that was CEO of Bico Limited, Glenn Stewart, one of our success stories right here in the Barbados manufacturing industry. So these success stories will be ongoing and we wanna make sure that you're a part of the story as well. So stay tuned, follow the stories, share the stories, enjoy the stories of manufacturing in Barbados and beyond.